Father, it is in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that we receive your word this morning. Let your word impact us. Let your word transform us. Let your word bring us healing and cure. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The creative power of God's word. Jeremiah 8.20. Jeremiah 8.20. Where's your Old Testament Bible? <laughs> Jeremiah 8 20. He said, The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. That means time has gone. What we expected didn't happen. You know, harvest is in summertime. And then some are passed, the harvest passed, but there's no change. Verse 21, he said, for the heart of the daughter of my people are my heart, and black astonishment has taken hold of me. So why will all this happen, he asked, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the heart of the daughter of my people recovered? Big questions. Why? Oh God, what? Why? Time gone. Time gone. Nothing. Is there no bomb in Gilead? That is two ways. There's, a, there's an answer. There's a solution. It's called the balm in Gilead. It's like medicine for your sickness. You have a headache. They say go to Tanalol or something like that, right? And you get relieved. So why no harvest? Why no healing? Why no deliver? No, no, no. I said, when you are yawning. <laughs> That's um, Elder Chibike. But we know Jesus is the great physician. We know his word has answers. Then why do we still remain under? And the answer is what we are proffering today. You see, with God, the physician... What does the physician do? Huh? He prescribes. Huh? You go to the hospital, they say, take. Take one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and five in the evening so that you can sleep. <laughs> and uh, that's his job. Whether you now take it or not is your problem. You get my point? But the prescription, God's word is filled, is, let's say God's word is God's prescription. Look at this. There was crisis in the camp. And they were being beaten by serpents and dying. That's when they were in the wilderness. That's a problem. They cried to God. Numbers 21 verse 8. He says, then the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And it shall be that everyone who is beaten, when he looks upon it, shall live. That is what? Or that was what? That was a prescription. Amen? That was a prescription from the great physician. Make a serpent, fairy serpent of brass. Put it upon a pole. If anybody is beaten by the serpent, all he needs to do is look on it. 
and it shall be healed. It's choice. He can look and say, I'm not looking. And you follow him like some people that I know, they might know, I, I, I will do it by myself. Okay. But the prescription, the, the, the physician has made his prescriptions. No matter the affliction, when you look up to him, you know, that was even significant of Christ on the cross. You remember? That if you look up to him, you will be recovered. That's why Psalm 34 and verse 5 says, they looked up to him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. You will not be ashamed. So there is who to look up to, to be free from shame. There is who to look up to, amen, to be delivered of every affliction. Hence, the Bible tells us, James chapter 1, verse 25, he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, that is a follower of the instructions received. He said, the same shall be blessed in his deed. Amen? The same shall what? Be blessed in his deed. He who looks, Isaiah said they looked up, no, Sam says they look up unto him. Even, I think it's Micah who say, look unto me and be ye saved. All the hands of the heart, for I am God and all else. They looked unto him. They looked unto him. He said that looks unto the perfect law of liberty, continuing the reign, and doing what is his, the same shall be blessing is he. And we keep reading, look up to, look up to. Who is he? I don't need to do eschatology for us. We already know he is the word. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So what do we do? Look to the word. The word of God carries the answer. It has answer. Everything answer to it. The ultimate is that balm in Gilead. Amen? That's why the Bible says he opposed all things by the power of his word, Hebrews 11, 3. And that's why the Lord Jesus admonishes himself. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you shall take care of whatever. So you see, in the word John 1, 4 tells us, in him was life. And that life is the light of man. That is when the word enters you, it injects you with what? Life. And that life will deliver whatever is required. It's the light of men, and the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That's why when you read Psalm 107, they that do business in great waters, they were in great affliction, but then they cried unto the Lord. Verse 20 says, what did he do? He sent them his word. Amen? I said amen? amen. He sent them his word. When you pray, when you cry to him, he still takes you back to where? His word. Amen. He sent them his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. Thank you. What concerns you there? Hmm? See this in next. Everything answers to the word. The word answers to nothing. That means everything is subjected to the word. You know why? Because everything came by the word. Amen? Everything came by the word. God is no respecter of persons. God only respects our faith. And faith, that is faith in his word. 
for faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word. And that's why you read this most beautiful psalm and Proverbs, passage in Proverbs, psalm, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20. My son, he said, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sins. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Or oh, let me read it this way. Let the word not depart from your eyes. Keep the word in the midst of your heart. Why? For the word is life. Just like John 1 tells us, John 1, 4. The word is life to those that find it and health to all their flesh. God's word is life. It's health is medicine to your flesh. God's word heals your body. God's word delivers your mind, renews your mind. God's word quickens your spirit, for it is the spirit that what quicken it. Once it is received, it enters your system. But it has to be received. Can the medicine on your table heal your body? Huh? You are just looking at it. I like this medicine. It's so powerful. Eh? And you are celebrating it on the table. Will it, will it heal, your, heal your body? No. Until it is what? received is the same with the word job 22 21 tells us acquaint now thyself and be at peace therefore good shall come unto you verse 22 he said receive i pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up his word in your heart receive it receive it we are admonished to receive it with meekness James 1.21 tells us that wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive, we say, with meekness, the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. It's able to save your soul. It's able to heal your body. It's able to deliver your mind. It's able to prosper your business. It's able to prosper your way. It's able to bring you all that you desire. But you must do what? Receive it with meekness. Glory to God. That's why I say, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, abide in you means you have received it into your system. Then you shall ask whatever. Can you imagine? Because it has answer for whatever. Amen. It has answer for whatever. God's word is creative in nature. For true faith, we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God, so that the things which we do see were not made of the things which do appear. Hebrews 11.3. God's word is creative in nature. It creates, and that's what he actually does. I think I've taught a message a long time on the image of God in you. When you the more you stay on God's word, it begins to create that image of God in you. And then as he settles, that's how you live. The word of God is creative in nature. Glory to God. That's why Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are not empty words. They are spirit and they are life. Amen. For it is the spirit that quickens; The flesh profits nothing. I put it this way. God's word is God's messenger. That's why every messenger of God preaches his word or delivers his word. Because the word is the real messenger. We are just carriers, if I put it that way. They prayed unto him, he sent them his word. Amen? The word is it. Say you are a preacher, a pastor, a prophet, but not delivering the word of God, you are no messenger of his. Because he takes a delivery of his word for you to qualify as his messenger. That's why God said, 
my word will not return unto me void. Because that's the message. He's a messenger. He goes. He said, it will accomplish whatever I sent it. It will prosper it there. It's the mess. He sends it. So when you receive it, confessing it, speaking it, affirming it, then it prospers in you. That means accomplish those things. So I challenge you today, those people, to always keep the word of God in your mouth. Make a practice of it. Always speaking his word, no matter the situation. No matter the contradiction. It's just like the peel of the physician. No matter the contradiction, keep speaking his word. Keep speaking his word. Because that word is creative. When you release it, God says it will not return void. It will accomplish the purpose for which you release it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. They cried unto the Lord. And then he sent them his word. Why? We just read it. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is what? Quick and powerful. Quick and powerful. He said it's sharper than any two-edged sword you can ever imagine. That means it will cut down whatever. That's the word. Quick and powerful can penetrate anything, can cut short anything, can dissolve anything. No situation can withstand it. The word of God is quick and powerful. It impacts spiritually. It impacts physically. It impacts mentally. It impacts medically. It impacts every which round. The word of God is what? Quick and powerful. Because God's word is creative. You speak it. As long as you keep speaking it, it keeps forming it. Don't be moved by what you see. Move what you see by what you say. Did you get that? Only my baby got that one. You want me to repeat it? Don't be moved by what you see. But rather do what? Move what you see by what you say. Amen? Don't be moved by what you see. But move what you see by what you say. For we walk not by sight, but by faith. Amen? So use your faith in his word to move what you see into becoming what you want. Amen? You remember the woman, the Shunammite woman? She could have narrated the ordeal, right? Oh my God, and I'm, I'm sure if she's from where some people come from, you know, that I know, this is how she will arrive, arrive at Elisha's place. Oh, I roll on the floor. Oh, my prophet, you have killed me. Oh, you have killed me. You, you understand what I'm saying? But those who know him, <laughs> are not moved by what they see but they move what they see by what they say how is it with your son it is well how your husband it is well everything about you fantastic ah. Elisha said trouble here there is something going on here but this woman will not tell me and the, the Lord has not revealed it to me Either because God was agreeing with the woman. That's what we are talking about. Lamenting on the situation will not change it. In fact, you are giving more fire to the firewood. <laughs> you are adding more fire with what you are saying to the firewood. I repeat again. Don't be moved by what you see. Move what you see by what you say. Amen? I said amen? 
That's what the word of God to us. Speaking the word of God into what you see and moving it to what you want to see. It is well with you. It is well with your family. It is well with your business. It is well with your body. Amen? You got that hurricane to complain about the sun, as if the, the sun is just shiny, and as if the sun is on, on, on you. And you know the way people talk? And then they say, you know, every time this sun comes up, my headache just comes. <laughs> eh? The devil is clapping. Thank God it's your own. So if it's your own, why not take more? Are you the only one the sun is shining on? Eh? Or is this the first time the sun will shine that it now become news? It's not your headache, you know. <laughs> People just open their mouths instead of agreeing with God, submitting themselves to his will by his word and speaking his word that the sun shall not smite me by day nor the moon by night. Amen? The word of God has answer for everything. You know, we just read the same word that was preached unto them was preached unto us. But the word preached to them did not profit them. Why? Because they did not receive it. He said, be not mixed with faith in them that had it. They did not receive it. They chose to be saying their own. They chose to be saying what they see. Yet we, have walked, we walk by faith and not by sight. They chose to be saying the happenings. So he could not profit them. He said, but the word of God is quick and powerful. So what do you see? I see great things. <laughs> I see me full of health, bouncing. I see this place filled to the overflowing. What do you see? That's what you say. God told Abraham, as far as you see, are you following me? I will give to you. And like I always tell people, he couldn't have been his physical sight. Because how far can your physical sight go? Is that the whole land? No. As far as he could see in the high of his spirit. I say it's yours. Amen. So stop localizing yourself to the happenings. Enlarge your future to what God has said in his word, which is creative. Because the more you receive it and you say it, the more it manifests it for you. Amen? The more it manifests it for you. Note this, that month of July that we are entering in two weeks is a month of release for you. It's a month of exertion of every depth. It's a month of will come out of every bondage. Because it's our seventh month, our month of jubilee. Amen? That's why when I put it in the prayer points, Elder is so used to this month, this month. Yeah. <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. You know, if you know God, you only see good things. That's all I see. Amen? You only see health. You only see healing. You see deliverance. You see victory. Amen. Glory to God. Mix faith with his word. Have faith in his word. And keep speaking it. Many today are speaking healing. Sorry, are seeking healing. Yet the toxicness. You can't be seeking healing and be talking sickness. You can't be seeking healing and be talking suffering. You can't be seeking wealth and prosperity and be talking lack. Remember, move what you see by what you say. Move what you see by what you say. Because as you keep saying what you want to see, that is what you will see. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Before this month is over, God of heaven will surprise you with a divine package from heaven 
that will make you say, wow. Me? For me? How did this happen? Where did it come from? And when they ask you that, you say, from above. Because every good gift is the only one person is clapping out of all of you here. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. And yours will be delivered to you before this month is over. Well packaged from above. Delivered with speed and precision. Amen? That none can miss it. Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. Let's give God thanks. He's worthy. Father, we thank you and bless your name. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the word of life. Thank you for the word of life. And thank you for the word of our divine package from heaven this month. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Can you tell God you receive your divine package this month? Tell him you receive your surprise the, the, the package from above this month. Yes, Lord, I receive it too. I receive my divine package, my surprise package from above this month that will make me say, oh my God, just for me, because only you can do it. We receive that divine package this month. Before this month is over, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I commend your blessing by your word of this morning. Let the word of this morning produce maximally. Let every hold of sickness and death be destroyed. And anyone hearing me this morning, in the name of Jesus, let the siege of evil against anyone's destiny here be broken through. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Oh, the word gives life. So this was delivers that pregnancy that you crave for into you as I'm speaking it. It delivers it to you in the name of Jesus. It delivers to you your health and your cure right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Lift up your hands and give God praise.